Ankylosaur week is here, so what great timing. Today, I'm really excited to share with you another repaint by a master artist. Back when PNSO announced Borealis Pelter, I was very excited. This was one of the most exciting finds in my time, and yet surprisingly, I know of only one good model, the 2018 Collecte. I love that, but I wanted to see what PNSO could do with it. Now let's look at the original very quickly. I think you can see what a beautiful sculpt this is, and the paintwork isn't bad. If I hadn't seen the release images, I would have been happy. But because I had, the paint tabs were a bit of a letdown. First, the most obvious are these spikes. What I fell in love with in the images was the off-whitish spikes tipped with black, contrasting with the rust red of the body. Well, here, you don't get that. And sometimes, when you see something you love so much in the release images, which didn't carry over to the model, it haunts you. The second thing was the general uniformity of the rust red armor. You can see there's some fading down the animal. But the area that mattered the most to me, the cervical half rings, have this kind of a shiny, almost translucent look. So there's a very plasticky feel to the whole affair. Enter Raul Pedroche, better known as Gex. Our Gex started painting war game miniatures 20 years ago, and only quite recently in 2017 married his love of painting figures with paleontology. Now, like most of us, the idea of repainting came when he received a figure he loved, except for the paint application. Unlike many of us, he had the skill to do something about it. I first learned of him when some images of his work popped up on my social media. But I didn't make the leap to Borello Pelter until I saw this. And I loved this so much, I wanted one for myself. But then I suddenly realized that instead of that, maybe he could do this. So began a very smooth, pleasant exchange that culminated in this. And if there's one word I can use to describe how this repaint elevates the original, it's definition. First of all, let's talk about what I wanted to rectify the most, these spikes here. Well, as you can see, the off-white contrasting with the surrounding rust red and fading into the black tips have now been rightfully restored. I did like this glossy shine on the original spikes, which are now met in the repaint, but this results in a kind of uh, granularity that makes it look more real, like living tissue. Now just look at the impact this makes, especially across the cervical half rings. Gone is that plasticky look in the original. Second, the uniformity here has been eliminated. Now, as we move down, you can see how every single detail is brought out. Now, Gex told me he used a combination of dry brushing and ink washes, though what he did exactly, I can't tell you. There seems to be a, almost an underlayer in between, and not just the bigger skews, but even the tiny ossicles in between. Now look at how much detail that was lost in the original is now brought out, showing the meticulous work of the sculptor. For example, in Boreal Pelta, the armor transitions from distinct transverse bands into a more, shall we say, laissez-faire layout of circular and hexagonal pieces that is sculpted by the artist. But here, you just couldn't see that clearly. Now here, on the other hand, you can see very clearly how the transverse bands are lost and then morph into a mosaic here. To use an analogy, if this is HD resolution, then what we have here is 4K resolution. Besides these two points, there were some pleasant surprises from this masterful repaint that I wasn't expecting. I asked Gex to make it look as close to the PNSO images as possible, but I had such an e-day fix on those spikes here. 
That's what I kept emphasizing and ranting on about. Now, meanwhile, Gex got busy working rendering the other areas, such as these scutes down the tail, in a similar fashion to what we saw in the shoulder and cervical half rings, bringing each out in bolder relief. In essence, really elevating what was a nice detail into a feature of interest in itself. I just love the way the base of these cutes transition into the tail with an intermediary black colour. Now this carries over into the skirting spikes here. And then the flank skewts. And even the arm ones. Now these are features I barely registered but now I'm forced to notice. And in addition, the skin around that is also painted in detail. Indeed, looking back at the release images, I didn't realize just how much I'd missed. Next, look at the head here. I actually had no issues with this because I could discern the individual scutes and ossicles in a neck and snout. But just, just look at this now. You can see how well defined these are, so much easier to see. And, on this, and, and from the side, the supraorbital and jugal osteoderms are brought out. And to be honest, I didn't even notice them on the original. The final bonus was on the underside. The original has that wonderful chainmail detail look that PNSO is so good at. The colour is uniform, but it's broken up because of the texture and the shadows they cast. But in the repaint, you see how much more could be done. The differentiation on the belly is obvious. Notice also the dark wash is not evenly applied, being darker here and lighter here. So I imagine some of this being not just coloration, but also real-world dirt and gunk. You'll also notice how much more detail has been brought out on the medial aspects of the arms and the legs. And it shows you just how good the PNSO sculptors are and what detail they put into this model. PNSO is already close to the perfect balance when it comes to a mass-produced figure that's affordable, highly detailed, and paint applications which match very closely to the release images. But earlier models like this, where it doesn't quite match up, that's when working a few extra hours to earn the money I need to put towards a repaint comes in. So there is the PNSO Boreal Pelter in all its glory, the way it looked in the release images, which I couldn't unsee, and hence am absolutely delighted to finally have it, as it should have been. Now I'll be putting some links in the description box below if you wish to contact Gex about repaints. Now Gex doesn't just do repaints, he actually does figure conversions. Now I don't want to spoil it for you, so go check out his Instagram. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised by what new dinosaurs he's created from very familiar old figures, especially his Ceratopsians. I'll repeat what I've said before, there are many paleo artists with a lot of talent who put in a lot of work and passion and research into what they do, and it's not an easy living. Sure, there are some celebrity artists that might be making big money, but that's the exception rather than the norm. So please consider supporting them if and when you can, which helps them do what they love while giving you what you love. And I think it's a win-win. So that's it for now. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the repainted PNSO Boreal Pelter, and I'll see you soon with another review. Meanwhile, enjoy and color song me. I'm sure there'll be plenty of fantastic related content that will be put out by content creators this week. So check those out using the hashtags below.